Well, welcome back everybody. In the last video, we got the fuel sender installed into the fuel tank and now it's time to put the tank into the wing. This is the left wing. In this video, we will get uh, the fuel line connected to the back of the tank and there's a little bit of wiring we have to do. This is the ground wire from the fuel sender and there's also going to be a ground wire right here that attaches to the fuel tank. One of the problems with this though is if you look at the rivets, the rivets are too long for this little tab. So the way I fix that is I shorten the rivet and I'm going to show you now how I do it. I put the rivet into a vise and I pound out the stem. Once I get it all the way down, I kind of insert another one just to kind of push it all the way through. And when you do that, it obviously is going to have to drop on the floor. So you pick up the stem, take out the little uh, rivet now that's just by itself. And I'm going to hold it in a pair of uh, pliers and I'm going to slice off about an eighth of an inch or so of the rivet with this Dremel. This is what the little rivet looks like after I uh, you know, cut off the bottom part. So I take a file and I clean up the edges or the bottom and I also like to go around the perimeter too just to remove any burrs. And I take an X-Acto blade, sorry it's blurry, but I clean out the hole like that and that just removes the burr from the inside of the hole. Once it's done, I take the original stem and I'm going to pound that back through. I get it started on the flat part, then I put it through the vise. I open the vise just enough to let the stem go down between the jaws. And I can pound the stem back into the rivet. And then I have a shorter rivet. This is what it looks like. And this is what it looks like compared to the original rivet. Now that the rivet is shorter, I can put it in the hole here and rivet the ground wire to the fuel tank. You're going to see there's two wires that need to be grounded. One of them comes from the fuel sender and the other one from the tank. That's these two wires here. I'll put them together, cut them so they're both the same length, and I'll put one connector, or I'll put both wires into one connector, and then that will uh, rivet to the, the rib to ground it. And I'm not gonna talk about the proper tools and, every, and the proper terminals and everything in this video. I think episode 20, I start wiring, and I'll talk a little bit more about it, but if I can just say for now, make sure you use an aviation terminal don't use the ones that come with the Zenith kit. They are not made for airplanes. And make sure you have the proper crimping tools and cutting tools and wire strippers and things like that for wiring. Again, I will cover all this later and especially a lot more in detail when I actually start doing or when I start wiring the airplane. I just chose a location here to drill a hole. I'm putting an A5 rivet in here. Make sure you deburr it. And then uh, once I have a hole here, the aluminum is clean and bare, there's no primer, so I can put the rivet through both ground wires basically and rivet that to the rib. And now the fuel tank and the fuel sender are both grounded to the airframe. Now with that step done, I need to cut a cutout in the top wing skin so I have access to the fuel sender. Now I measured it and drew the square on the aluminum, but before I cut it out, I just wanted to clico the skin to the wing, and I just wanted to kind of look under where I traced just to make sure that it actually was kind of centered over the fuel sender. Even though I did it with, with measuring, you know, I just wanted to put it on and just kind of double check that it's in the right spot. I drilled a, or I used a step drill for the corners to get a round corner. And then I just used a Dremel to cut out the square and then a file to clean it all up and make it look pretty. And this is what it looks like when it is done. All right guys, with the fuel tank now installed, I wanted to show you some options we have for fuel lines. So some of the options we have for fuel lines 
are a solid aluminum line like this, a rubber fuel line, or a high quality steel braided fuel line like this one here from Aircraft Specialty. All right, so right now I wanna explain why I'm using this fuel line from Aircraft Specialty and not the solid aluminum line or the uh, rubber hose. In my Zenith Cruiser, all of the fuel lines that are in the fuselage are steel braided fuel lines from Aircraft Specialty. They're one piece lines, so they go all the way from the wing down to the bottom up to the fuel selector valve. So being a one piece line, there's no connections anywhere that can leak, obviously other than the two on the ends. I like the fact that they're flexible. They're steel braided, so they're really tough. So if I ever crash this airplane, I flip it over and bend the fuselage, I don't have to worry about the fuel lines breaking and spilling fuel. But the difference is in the wings. In the wings, all of the fuel line, I use the solid aluminum line. And that's not what I want to do on the Super Duty. All right, I said that I don't want to use the solid fuel line in my Super Duty, which I did use in my cruiser. And the reason why is because on the cruiser, the fuel comes out of the side of the tank. You can see in the Super Duty, it comes out on the back of the tank and the cruiser comes out on the side. So what I did in the cruiser is I did, like I said, I used this solid line and I bent the line so it goes into the, the fitting in the tank. It comes out, it makes a 90 degree bend, comes back here through the aft spar, makes another 90 degree bend, and then it stops right about here. All right, let me interrupt for a second here because they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Here is the fuel line in my cruiser. These pictures are from my cruiser build log and you can see what I'm talking about with the shape and the length of the fuel lines. Now, why did I make it stop here? The reason why is because I did not know how long to make this line. When I was building the wings for the cruiser, I didn't have the fuselage built and I didn't know how far this would actually be from the fuselage. I didn't know exactly where the fitting would be on the fuselage that would plug into this line. And when you use these solid lines, they pretty much have to be made to an exact size. There's not a lot of room for play with them. So I didn't know if I needed to make it here or here or here or up and down, or I just had no idea where to make this. So what I did was I made it short and then after I got the wings attached to the fuselage, I made another line just like this, you know, about this long when I could measure the distance between the fitting and the, the fuselage and this one. So I have basically a fuel line here that connects to the fuel line. It goes from here to here to the tank. So obviously that is a potential spot for a leak. You know, it hasn't leaked yet, but I just didn't want to do that in the Super Duty. I think the much better way to go is with a fuel line from Aircraft Specialty which is a steel braided fuel line that virtually never needs replaced. It's flexible, which is really nice because now you see how you see the routing of the line here. It comes out, makes a, a shallow 90 degree bend and comes over here towards the fuselage. But what's really nice and what I like about this is I can mount it here or here or here or here or back here, or, you know, or in or out, whatever I need, wherever the, the fitting ends up on the fuselage, this will be able to connect to it. I don't need to splice in any other kind of line. It's just one solid line going from the fuselage all the way up to the tank. I really like that. It's much simpler. It's a much better way to do it. Um, and that's one of the advantages of building, you know, kind of a second Zenith is I kind of learned all the lessons on the, the cruiser and now I'm making this airplane, I think even better. So yeah, these lines are available from Aircraft Specialty. I'll put the link down below. I think you can probably just call Steve at uh, Aircraft Specialty and tell him you want the fuel lines that go inside the Super Duty wing. And uh, he already has them measured and, and specially made uh, for this application. Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode 18. It's a little bit of a shorter episode because I actually started filming this about three weeks ago and I kind of want to get this one finished up. Episode 19 is actually already done and that is installing the Dynon pitot tube into the wing. So that'll be coming out in a few days. After that, episode 20, I have a couple wires here. I need to run through the wing for the pitot heat controller and then I can put the skins on the wing, finish that up. 
I'll probably get the plastic wing tips fit to the wing and I'll start wiring some of the aero LED lights, basically putting the connectors onto the wires so those are ready for the nav and strobe lights and the leading edge recognition lights. After that, I'm kind of at a toss up right now what I wanna do. I have the, the flapperons pretty much almost done. I might finish those up and then logically I would go on to the slats but I'm kind of tired of working on the wings and I'm just, I really want to get to that fuselage because for me, the fuselage is really the fun part of building an airplane where you get the fuselage built and you get it onto gear and you can start planning a panel and stuff like that. So I may do the slats a little bit later and then after the, this wing and the flaperons are done, just uh, start working on that fuselage. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. I hope you guys are actually building your own airplane. It might not be a Zenith and that's just fine. Whatever you're building, enjoy the process. And uh, I guess we'll see you on episode 19 in a few days.